Till now, we have discussed how the information flows inside a cell from a DNA le level to the mRNA level to the protein level, which is the functional unit. So, if we now consider each of these layers as a <coughs> level of information, a lot of data can be generated at each level and studied in detail to understand what is happening at each level. So, what we will now discuss in the next few slides are what are the sources of big data in biology. At what, what does each level of information, DNA, RNA, protein give in terms of big data and how we can actually understand this big data and process it and that will come later in the later sections of the course. So, just to give you a brief overview, what kind of data we can get. So, as I said, there is a DNA level, there is an RNA level, there is a protein level. These are the three steps of the central dogma. In addition to that, we have metabolites, which are these chemicals that are, uh, that drive most of the processes inside the cell. Then we have flux, that means how fast or how slow a process is happening. And these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps are in the middle of the two main points. One is at the lower side, on the left side we have genotype, which is the genetic makeup of an organism. On the right side, we have the phenotype, which means the outcome of that genetic makeup, right? Whatever traits we exhibit, whatever characters we exhibit. So, this is, this sort of schematic shows how the genotype gets converted into a phenotype, how a genotype gets translated into a phenotype. So, this is called genotype phenotype relationship and this is one of the most challenging relationship to decipher and there are several technologies that exist which we will discuss very briefly which allow us to understand more about this relationship than what we will get from each one of these levels. So, big data in biology essentially includes both the macromolecules and micromolecules that are present at each of these five different levels of the central dogma. Three primarily, DNA, RNA protein and two additionally. And big data usually involves data collection, which we will briefly discuss how it is done. We will not discuss much about how it is stored but we will discuss again a little bit about how it is analyzed. And the later part of the courses taken by other, uh, other faculties will cover mathematical basis of how the analysis is done as well. So, if we just quickly go over this genotype phenotype relationship and each level of information. So, when I say DNA, because DNA is made up of which, which sort of makes up the genes the big data that comes out of DNA is called epigen uh, is called genomics. So, genomics is essentially whatever the DNA of an organism is, of a cell is. The regulatory mechanisms that regulate the expression of the genome is called epigenomics. So, this is the regulatory mechanisms, the whole, right. So, we are talking about not just one gene, not just two genes, but all of the genes of an organism. So, if I am talking about a human cell, genes only, if I am talking about genes only, which is approximately 30,000 genes in humans, then this is called exome sequence variants, disease associated mutations that give risk to a particular disease. And we will see some of the examples of this technique later on in the course. The next step of central dogma is RNA, which as we saw 
produces transcripts. So, the big data that comes out of RNA is called transcriptomics and as we were discussing RNA allows us for differential expression. So, if I were to see differences in expression between normal and a disease uh, state of the whole cell, I will be able to identify which genes are differentially expressed between the two. So, we will be able to see disease perturbed gene expression. Now, if you consider exome sequence and RNA sequence, they would be of similar complexity because RNA would be all the genes that are uh, transcribed, right. Whole genome will be uh, larger than the transcriptome. Then comes the third level which is proteomics, which is the big data which has all the proteins that are expressed in a cell. Now, similar to RNA transcriptomics, differential proteomics would allow us to see what is, what are the differences at the protein level and what are the differences between how proteins interact because one of the properties that proteins do is that they interact and we saw that in the hemoglobin example that there can be different domains that can come and interact, right. Similarly, different proteins of different kinds actually come and interact to bring about a particular function. So, if that is perturbed, that also in a particular disease that also can be studied using proteomics. So, three major data sets, genomics, transcriptomics and proteomics and these are the most common ones. There are few others such as using metabolite, there will be metabolomics which would give us information of what are the pathways that get perturbed during a disease, metabolic pathways that get perturbed during a disease. Then there is fluxomics, like fluxes are like how fast, or how slow, or what is the sort of this rate of rates, differences in rates of different reactions that comes under flux, flux analysis and fluxomics also gives that information. So, if, if in a normal state the flux through a pathway is level x and a disease state is now level y where y is greater than x then that means the particular uh, pathway is hyperactivated and therefore needs, needs you can actually start devising strategies to control the, the high flux through the through a particular pathway. So, as you can see we have a large amount, large variety of uh, data, big data and of all the data sets, the, you'll, you'll see a no common suffix that is their omics. So, these are all called omic data sets and that's why they title omic data, right. So, from DNA to re recap, from DNA we get genomics, from RNA we get transcriptomics, from protein we get proteomics and these are the three major data sets that are available. So, we what we will do now is sort of cover each of these big data sets briefly and like genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, etc. And later on we will come and look at genomics and transcriptomics which is the which are the two most abundant data big data sets in little bit more detail. So, as we were uh, discussing Genomics is the study of total genetic information of an organism. Now, if I were to take a, any particular cell from a human body, that will be the total genetic information. I do not need to check either let us say skin cell versus liver cells versus a neuron. Any cell will do because the genetic information each cell of a, any given human body is going to be identical. So, genomics can be done from any cell type, it is not dependent on the cell type. 